okay? So C minor 7 right here, F minor 7, A flat major 7, and because the next chord is only a half step down, G7, we, go to the, we use the same voicing, but now we go to a dominant shape, so that brings us to that chord, okay? And then if we moved on to the second ending, as we, we will, then you can, you have choices sometimes in terms of where you can put the next chord. So you could play the B flat seven here with this shape right there, or you could use that to establish the dominant chord right here, okay? If you do that, let's say you go from G seven here to B flat seven here, and then you go into the RB section, then, you're nicely set up for the, the B section where you play E flat major seven here, F minor seven. Now we're getting a little bit further up the neck, so why don't we try to play, in fact, F minor seven here and G minor seven here. So we'll go E flat, F minor, G minor, E flat. I'm sorry, F minor, E flat. That's the way it's gonna work. And then finally, on the last bar, we'll make the minor seven here, which make it a dominant chord. And then that would be a good opportunity maybe to go to the next position. We could maybe start C minor seven right here on the sixth string root, right? And then we could play the routine again, but in a higher register, okay? So let's just map out the first one. Let's do that first um, over our groove here. Let's, Take, take a listen to the groove we've got here, and we'll come up with a rhythm guitar style. Pretty funky, huh? Okay, so let's kill the chords, because we're going to handle that ourselves. But let's do, let's kind of keep it in that upbeat thing. So here's what's going to happen. The quarter note is actually right here. It's pretty slow. It's just that there's an upbeat feel to it. So the quarter note's really one, two, three, four, two two, three, four, okay? So why don't, we, why don't we get into this kind of a groove here, like. Right, pretty much the way we first heard it, okay? I think that'll be a good, good uh, kind of a pseudo reggae style here, okay? So we're gonna stay pretty much in this range of the, of the fingerboard. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna set us up with one bar up front and then we're gonna play. Here we go, two, three, four, set up. Each chord. Okay, now we worked our way up to the next position we're going to play the chords in. Okay, so that's the kind of thing that you want to do constantly to uh, practice your chord voicings is to put them in a progression, but, but really try to make sure that you're, you're playing all the shapes that, you, that you've been working on. So you establish a position, you decide how far from the first chord you're gonna, you're gonna stray from, and then you're gonna stay there and work on all the chord shapes, okay? That's really a good, good te practice technique, and I know I've talked about that before, but let's keep doing that. You will find that you will learn these voicings much better with much more, um, you know, skill and uh, you'll have much more 
of a clear idea of where you're going all the time when you're playing your rhythm guitar because you'll have practiced all these shapes all the time. Okay, so let's do it when, one more position up. Let's start here now and establish the next range. So we've got F minor, that's obvious right there. Major seven we could put right here. We could put G7 back down here, right? Uh, now we can play the, play the E flat major seven here, and we'll just go up the neck, right? We'll use actually the same voicing three times in a row because it's so perfectly suited for this position, right? And then we can end up being right here for the C minor. Once again, we would be in a higher position. However, you get to a certain point where some of these chords, where they're not really very practical because you get higher than they would actually need to be played or they, would sound, they wouldn't sound all, all that great. But for purposes of practice, it's still good to do that. So let's do it here from the beginning again. And this time, let's change the rhythm a little bit. Let's, uh, let's uh, do something different. Um, how about we do something like this? Be, you'll follow along with me. Check this out. This will be nice. Okay, one bar up free at the top. Here we go. Three, four. So you probably realized or, or noticed that I was adding something to those minor chords. It was kind of fun to do. That's just because I have this position right here of a chord doesn't mean that there aren't other fingers available or other notes that are within the chord that I can, I can actually play. And I did that sort of just to show you how you can take, make use of an extra finger. I, I actually added the flat seven at the top of the chord. Even though I have it here within the voicing already, you can add another voice inside of the chord. So, harder on this chord when the major seven because you, you're using every finger so you can't really grab notes out of it okay so it really works better for the, the minor chord right here okay so um, this is what I want you to do from now on with every chord progression that you have go back to some of the previous lessons and find those and go over those again but now that we're working on on our chord vocabulary chord vocabulary and we're really expanding what we're doing you're going to find that you can go back and revisit those progressions again and get more practice routines out of them. So let's do that for the, for the next uh, homework assignment, okay? Dave Hill signing off for now, and I'll see you on the back end of this lesson. It's been fun. Talk to, talk to you later.